My name is Jim Francis Guy. I'm a volunteer here, so I don't know a lot of some of the educational quality issues compared to you and the audience and the people here. I've been on the State Board of Higher Ed for, uh, just, uh, for four or five years, so I'm speaking where that had briefly trying to answer your questions on maintain, what it's going to take to maintain quality, but I'm also here wearing another hat, which is kind of the advocacy hat of the Oregon idea, which I, so I want to address your question, and I'll say more about that from two vantage points. So, so there's kind of three things I want to say. One is, there has to be kind of an opportunity to have for our young people, the next generation coming up, an opportunity for public education of their choice, whether it be at a community college or at a university, or, or whether it begins at a community college and works itself up. So they have to have that opportunity first to begin with, and I think a lot of people address this. When you have here in Oregon, for in the Portland Metro area, about 30% have actually go on and graduate. But if you're a person of color and you're down at 15%, or if you're a rural Oregon and you're at 15%, then you don't have that opportunity. So before you can get to your question, you got to have the opportunity. So that's why the higher ed board with the work of the governor and the business folks united on tuition equity, which I appreciate that. That's the one thing Rick Perry has right. And so we, you know, we have to advocate and do things like that on the tuition equity side. But in addition to that, and this is going to be a constant theme. We need to be more efficient. We're very supportive. We need to work better as a system, pre-K, with our community colleges and with our universities and graduate programs because we're all in this together serving the students and they want, they need us to work more efficiently together. Having said that, without more money, public money, into this system, we're not going to get where we need to be. That's a given in all three of these issues. There has to, because we're raising tuition more and more. And you can see that with flat enrollment at Portland State and expanding enrollment at the community colleges. And that's happening in other places in the state. It's going to take more money or else, because we've gone from one-third state support to uh, now it's two-thirds tuition, one-third state support. It used to be exactly the opposite. Two-thirds state support, one-third tuition. We can't keep doing that. And it's already pushing people into the community colleges. I was late for a meeting because we're trying to raise scholarship dollars. And this meeting got changed, so that's the reason I was late. I had a pre-existing, but it was related to higher ed. So we can't keep doing this. We have to get more money in the system. I believe in the community colleges. Some people are better served in the community colleges in some programs. But this research shows that some first generation people of color actually as well, if not better served in the universities. So we can't just focus everybody into the community colleges. That's not going to work as a system. So we need some more public money on the access course. In addition to philanthropy and scholarships and all of those efforts in a more coordinated effort. So that's the first point. The second is the one I know the least about, which is what is actually happening with the faculty in the classroom. The way the higher ed board tries to get at this is looking at the graduation rates for, and the retention rates to see if you are choosing to actually leave. Now, some of that is for financial reasons, but some of it is because you need to work. But some of it may be related to the quality of what's happening in this class. So we measure that, and we grade the, the president's performance evaluations include retention rates. We've even taken away some money from the universities and put it into a pot for retention. And people are rewarded if people stay. We, we try to create some financial incentives. Now we're really looking at the investment board, which we support to help us refine that as to how that's going to work. And then, and, but we also notice and publicize that, you know, on the research side, you know, the faculty here in, in OUS, the university system, is the seventh best in the whole country at attracting outside resources. So they're doing something right because those are very competitive. But on the second issue, some other state systems are ahead of us. The chance in terms of trying to get at this quality question, that's the second issue, and it's directly related to what you're saying. But then the third way we measure this, and it's already been said by the first people I already heard, is what's the results? I mean, it's not just about employment, but employment, employment's kind of per important. If you now have a $22,000 loan that you got to pay off, which is the average, but it's also contributing, are you moving ahead into graduate programs, are you getting hired in the 
kind of areas that, that you want? Or, but are you also connected to the community in a variety of ways, whether it's through nonprofits, advocacy organizations? The last thing I want to say is, because this cannot be solved from insiders, this is my firm belief, we're 46th in the country in terms of funding for post-secondary for a reason. And that is, in our history, we have not valued post-secondary the way North Carolina and some other communities have been doing. So we have to be more efficient. We have to work together. The public isn't going to buy it unless we are seen working together. We have to target. We need more the degrees, not just seat time. We have a lot of work to do. But when we do all that work, we're still going to be not providing the equal opportunity without some more money. And to do that, you need the business folks, you need the alumni, you need the faculty, you need outside organizing. So I don't know how many, I learned about Saul Walensky, actually, and, and we need more of that. We need more good, more good old fashioned community organizing where we pick an issue and none is more important than post-secondary in our state. And if you combine it with K-12, you've got something that our citizens really care about because you've got so many users of it, whether it be the business community, whether it be alumni, faculty, foundations, who can organize around a common purpose. That's what we've done with the Oregon idea. We have an outside advocacy group. We have a C3. We've now created a C4. We're about to create a PAC. Now I'm not raising I'm not talking to you as a member of the higher ed. I'm talking to you as a volunteer member of this organization. Okay, and so we have to organize around that. And then there's an inside strategy and there's an outside strategy. We work, and, and it's it's not it's bipartisan. It's not focused on any, but we support efforts to try to get more public dollars on focused areas. So first, we advocated for no longer being a state agency. But we didn't just accept in the governor's findings. We just didn't accept the governor's budget. We actually advocated for more money for higher ed, for OHSU, who's part of this, and for the community colleges. And so we're going to continue now in the 2012 legislature. They wanted to, you know, because we're in tough times and we have to compete with other important things in the budget. This is not just about us. We've got a lot, as you know, seniors and health care and important issues. But then we also may have to build more prisons. So we need an organized voice that says that 3.5% cut that Portland State and all the, that the universities took and the community colleges that are our partner, we can't take that. And if you want to take another 3.5% and another 7.5%, you can't do that. So we need to act on the, on, we need to do better on equality, but we can't keep eroding the financial support beyond it. Beyond that, we need to get our act together collectively with the leadership of the government, governor, work together more as a system. And then in 2013, we have to look at things like targeted support to reduce tuition, critical degree programs that serve the economy of the state, research that will actually produce employment. You know, for our, and we have to tie up the economy. And I know I was a liberal arts major too, but we have to make this connected to getting the economy of our state so that every, but not just the economy, everybody can participate in the economy. So it's both. They both have to go. The only thing I saw in your core, and the more advocates we have with core and you helping in this, making sure we're being efficient and using the money right, the better. So we welcome you, and I appreciate this opportunity. But I also read some things on your literature that implied you can just redistribute the money, that there's enough money to do these things. I don't accept that. I just want to be clear with you. I don't accept that premise, if that's one of your premises. I don't know enough about you as an organization, but I read it. And that's the one thing I disagree with you on the one on that I read. Those are my reactions. Thank you. Okay, so um, what we'd like to do, just Jim, I need to re re look at our, uh, our website because we want more money. <laughs> just, just be clear with that. We want more money. Um, so uh, we need to look at how we wrote.